So Nightblade tanks are a pretty unpopular choice for tank class in ESO. Now, the reason for this is the Nightblade offers no real unique group-based benefits. Like every buff or debuff that the Nightblade provides can be supplied from a different source or an easier source than what the Nightblade can give it. So this makes it kind of difficult to validate the use of Nightblade tanks in terms of group content. And if you think about it, in group content, um, like tank tanks can't do anything if they're not really in group content. Like as a tank, you are a group based role. So it's difficult to do stuff if you're not in a group. So you've got to kind of think about the group when you're putting together a build. And if um, if you're not if you're not kind of set up for a group, then it becomes difficult to, to really make use of it. Now, uh, Nightblades do have a class-based buff um, that is unique to them, but it's only useful for stamina damage dealers. Now, stamina damage dealers um, are quite a rarity nowadays. Once upon a time, we used to have a stamina meta. We used to have stamina damage dealers. We had um, a real use for the Nightblade tank back in those kind of situations, but nowadays, not so much. So if you are in a, in a stamina group and you don't have another Nightblade, then as, all of a sudden the Nightblade tank becomes really useful. If you're in a four-man group and there's no Nightblade again and it's stamina-based, then obviously a Nightblade tank is going to have some additional use. But generally, because of this, they've only got this one buff, it kind of makes them less useful than other classes. The main benefit to playing as a Nightblade tank has got to be the kind of their ability to mitigate damage. So they do have good amounts of damage mitigation thanks to the passives. There's things in there that reduce damage. So when it comes to actual tanking, the Nightblade is reasonably well built to physically tank. So if you're just kind of considering things from the tank perspective, then the Nightblade tank is a reasonably good option. If you're thinking it from the group base perspective, they're not very good at all. So it depends which way you're looking at it. If you want something that's going to benefit you, the Nightblade tank might be that kind of thing. If you're looking for something that's going to benefit your group, then then it wouldn't be. Um, Nightblade tanks have good healing, but they don't have a burst heal. So it is possible to get really good healing on a Nightblade, but it does require you to be very active. And I do feel like the Nightblade tank's uh, playstyle is kind of challenging for newer tanks. So if you are a new tank, I wouldn't suggest the Nightblade tank. I would suggest playing a different class first until you kind of understand tanking and then maybe consider a Nightblade in the future. But I do feel like the play style of a Nightblade tank is a little bit tricky because it does require you to be at its most efficient. It will require you to do light attack weaving. It will require you to, to occasionally heavy attack. So if you're somebody who's going to start tanking and you're going to be blocking for long periods of time, you're not going to be able to maximize the benefit of the Nightblade tank because it does require those light attacks to get everything that you need. Um, so yeah, sustain can be good on a Nightblade. Like we talked about before, there are a couple of skills. Leeching Strikes, um, Incap. If you're light attacking and you've got those skills on your bar and they're active, then you're going to be benefit from constant incoming of resources. If you stand there and perma block, you're going to have a very hard time sustaining because the only thing that's going to give you resources back is when your Leeching Strikes ends after 20 seconds and you're going to get just over that 4k stamina. So it can be tricky to sustain if you are used to blocking a lot. If you're a more proactive tank who knows when to block and when to drop block and when to light attack and when to do things, you're going to benefit greatly from, from the good sustain. Nightblade's major, major downfall overall is their crowd control ability. Now, the problem you've got is to chain an enemy in, you're going to have to use Silver Leash, which is a very expensive stamina skill. And to then crowd control an enemy, you haven't got a skill that will work. So when you chain in an enemy, you can't then fear a chained enemy because they're on a cooldown. You can chain an enemy and then immobilize them, but the Nightblade doesn't have a reliable AoE immobilization skill. There's no skills available to the Nightblade to give them what they need. They do have a crowd control skill, but it doesn't work with a chain. So it really it, that is the major downfall is their ability to control a crowd of enemies and effectively pull them in root them hold them in place um using things like caltrops though can help because it snares them by 50 percent so often it's better to use a chain and a snare because a chain and a snare do work together but a chain and a fear skill do not work together so that is a bit of a downside to the night blade 
So overall, really, in the current meta, there's not a huge amount of use for the Nightblade tank. Um, I do feel like they could use a bit of love. They could use a bit of an update in terms of what they provide towards a group. Um, but they are they do make good actual tanky tanks. So if you just want something for physically tanking, they are good. They're not ideal for beginners, but they are they're kind of they're one of the least preferred classes um, of tank currently in the game. But we'll see if the we'll see if there's any changes in the near future which will kind of put that a bit higher up the list um, when maybe they get an update and maybe some some new buffs or debuffs. So the strengths of a Nightblade tank, great damage mitigation. Um, minor protection and major evasion by casting skills. You get those as part of other skills. Uh, you don't need a major resolve skill, so you save on the bar space by not needing to slot a major resolve skill. It's a passive. Um, they have good healing over time. There is a good sustain, but only really for experienced players, like we mentioned. Area of effect skills, so minor main, minor vulnerability, and they're good for debuffing multiple enemies. So they are kind of good at AoE debuffing with minor vulnerability. Uh, with minor maim and things like that. They do have AoE debuffs, which can be quite nice. And they are good at building ultimate faster than, than some other classes. Now, the weaknesses. Hard to sustain for beginners. They've got no burst heal. No good crowd control or good chain skills. Their only group buff is easily replaced by having another Nightblade in a group. So if there's one other Nightblade in a group, you're absolutely useless. Um, all buffs and debuffs are obtained easier by other sources or can be gained easily by other classes. Um, your group buffs here, minor savagery by the hemorrhage passive, AoE minor vulnerability with lotus fan, uh, AoE minor main with dark shade, ranged major breach with marked target which can come in quite handy sometimes, and AoE major expedition with refreshing path, and as we mentioned before, um, like I say, most of those can, can be obtained in other ways. Quick look at the skills, so we're going to go through all the skills you might use as a tank. Assassination skills, first one, in, ca in cap. Really good skill for the Nightblade tank. While slotted, you gain Reeve, which restores 100 magicka and stamina when you deal damage with a light or heavy attack. When you combine in cap, along with leeching strikes, with light attack weaving, loads of resources. Loads and loads of resources. So, a really good skill for building resources if you have a hard time to sustain. Great stuff. Uh, Assassin's Blade. Not really a tank skill. So, Killer's Blade isn't a isn't necessarily a tank skill, but if you look at it, heals you for 8531 if the enemy dies within 2 seconds of being struck. This portion of the ability scales off your max health. So, it's a huge burst heal, but only if you're actually using it as a damage skill. But it is like 2k stamina. Not super useful, but you might consider it if you're in like an off-tank position and you want to provide a little bit of extra damage. And it's going to be like an execute as well. It's an execute, a heal... You might find some minor use for that. Lotus Fan, one of your main debuffs. So you're going to teleport to the enemy. So it's a gap closer, which can be useful for some trials. It's also going to provide minor vulnerability. So uh, increasing the damage that the enemy takes by 5%. It's an AoE skill as well. So you can use it in an ad pull. Use it into an ad pull and you give everything, uh, you give everything nearby minor vulnerability. Mirage, both morphs of this skill are really good. Phantasmal Escape is really good. This is a great, a great skill as well. Um, you get Major Evasion, Minor Resolve, reduces your incoming damage from every attack by 20%. You also get uh, extra resistances, almost 3k. If you use the other morph, you get no resistances, but you're, immu like you're immune to snares and immobilization. So both are really good, depending on the situation. If you're in a high damage, main tank and situation, Mirage is going to be better. If you're in a lower damage snare or immobilization situation like Vhoff, then obviously Phantasmal Escape is going to be the better option. Next skill, Piercing Mark. This is a ranged based major breach and um, I mean it's not something that you absolutely need to use because you can just use Ellie Drain. Do you know what I mean? But if you really wanted to, it's got a huge range of 50 meters and it lasts for 30 seconds. So you could use that if you wanted to. Grim Focus, again, we don't really use it, but if you were looking for some damage on your tank, then you could potentially use this uh, for some additional damage. This used to be a, an amazing skill for Nightblade tanks. This used to give us damage reduction, but now it doesn't. They took that out a while ago, so now it's not really that good. In terms of the passives, uh, Master Assassin, not needed. Uh, Executioner, a very good passive. When an enemy dies within two seconds of being damaged, you gain resources back. Uh, that often happens when you've got your skills down on the ground. Pressure points. 
Because your weapon is spelled critical rating. You need that for your final passive of hemorrhage, which increases your critical damage by 10%. And this is your group buff of minor savagery for stamina damage dealers, which is going to increase their weapon critical by 1314 for 20 seconds. So that's your group buff, which requires you to deal critical damage. Other tank skills. So bolstering darkness. If you're looking to buff your max health, you might slot this on your front bar. So when you slot this on, the, on your front bar, you, you benefit from one of the passives here. Uh, Dark Vigor increases your max health by 3%. If you're in a super high damage situation, you might consider just slotting this on the front bar. And it's also a, a, a decent-ish um, emergency skill. So it is going to um, it is going to give major protection to you and allies inside the, the actual ring. So if you're in a super high damage situation, it's a really nervy situation, you could proc this on the ground for some AoE major protection for everybody. So Concealed Weapon. Provides off-balance. Off-balance isn't that useful, so it's not really like, that good to have. Surprise attack does apply to Sundered status effect, which isn't needed if you're using Pierce Armor. But let's say you weren't using Pierce Armor, then you could get the minor breach from the Sundered effect by using Surprise attack. But it doesn't really seem worth it by using uh, a really, really expensive stamina skill with a short duration. Uh, Dark Cloak. One of your most useful skills on a Nightblade is a heal that stacks with your max health and it provides minor protection reducing damage taken by 5% so very very good skill great heal over time that heal goes up from 3924 that can be buffed up but if you increase your max health if you've got any healing buffs applied to your character this is going to go up as well refreshing path another great group skill um, it's going to provide major expedition to your whole group and it costs magicka so this is better than using something like rapid maneuvers in situations where you might use that so Refreshing Path gives the Major Expedition. It's also a nice heal. 1590 uh, heal to you and your allies. Th this will this will be more than what it says on the tooltip as well, because when you've got buff, when you've got very various healing buffs and things going, this heal's gonna be much more increased. So it's it's good, especially if you're combining refreshing path with dark clog, leeching strikes, a bunch of other stuff. When you've got all those ticking at the same time, you've got lots and lots of healing. Um, Mass hysteria, the next skill. Summon a dark spirit to terrify up to six enemies, causing them to be cower in fear for five seconds. This is your crowd control skill. Your Nightblade crowd control skill is a fear. That's why it's not so great, because when you chain the enemy in, you can't then fear them with mass hysteria. So it is a bit of a problem, but if you just want something where you walk into an ad and you fear the nearby enemies and you're not worried about when you've chained them in, uh, if they're feared or not, then obviously this is going to be a good option for you. Uh, dark Shade. So... It's basically um, a shade of an enemy next to you for 20 seconds. It's going to cause damage. I think it's like every 4 seconds it does a whirlwind attack. And it's an AoE attack. And every time it does that, it's going to do AoE minor maim. Yeah, so it, it, does, it does an AoE attack. It spins around. It causes an AoE minor maim as an AoE. So obviously we've got that for, for a little bit of a an AoE debuff if required. But this is easy to obtain in other sources like we've mentioned already. Refreshing Shadow is good passive increased recoveries. Shadow Barrier must have passive again. Major Resolve, based on how much heavy armor you're wearing. This means you don't need to use a heavy armor skill, like Balance or something like that. You would obviously still need Balance on a Nightblade tank, however, if you're in Magicka Intense situations. So, like, if you're on Vhoff first boss and you're having to spam Purge, you, this is not going to be good enough. You're going to need to still slot Balance or the other Morpher Balance to get... Um, to get those purges out. Dark Vigor, increased max health. As we said already, in situations where you might need to, you might slot Dark Cloak, Refreshing Path, and Bolstering Darkness on one bar, and you'll get huge amounts of health. So if you do need to increase your max health for whatever reason, you can rely on Dark Vigor by slotting a few more skills from this particular skill line. Uh, Dark Veil, really good as well. So this increases your shadow abilities by 2% that are non-invisible um, skills. So pretty much all the skills that we've mentioned as a tank are going to benefit from the increased duration. So especially Dark Cloak and Refreshing Path are going to be a great benefit to you um, by having that increased duration. Finally, we've got Siphoning. So Soul Siphon. Massive heal. Um, it gives major vitality and it provides a synergy. An emergency skill at best. I wouldn't slot this if you don't have to, but if you are in a very progressive group, new group where lots of people are dying and things are happening and it's, it's a bit of a mess, then, then yeah, 
have it on your front bar ready to go so that you can benefit from uh, your group getting that extra heal if the healers are dead or whatever reason. So this is an emergency if you need, if you need it, but I wouldn't advise using it if you can help it. Swallowed Soul, the nice little spawn bus skill. If you've got enough magicka, you're dealing with enough uh, sustain. So you do damage to the enemy and you heal for 38% of the damage you've caused. Um, every two seconds uh, for 10 seconds. And the main reason why you might do this, so it's a nice little heal, but it's mainly for the ultimate. So you're going to gain ultimate back via one of the passives. So you'd use it for, for the ulti gain mostly, but it's nice to also have an additional heal. So when can, again, when you combine it with Dark Cloak, with Leeching Strikes, with Refreshing Path, then you've got your Swallowed Soul coming in with another heal. Obviously, you've got quite a lot of heals over time coming in, and you should have no reason why you're dying. Okay, next is Malovran Offering. Um, we've got a few options here. So this is not a bad skill at all. This has like been updated for this patch. I personally like the Healthy Offering Morph. Grants you minor mending after casting, increasing your healing done. So if you cast this, you then get minor mending, and then you've got your uh, Dark Cloak ticking. You've got other heals coming in. This is ticking away, but you've got minor mending now, so everything's increased. So it's a nice little boost to your healing, and it's a pretty good skill as well. So pour out your life's blood and channel the arcane, healing yourself or an ally in front of you for 9k health while draining yourself of 1,008 health from yourself over 3 seconds. So if you're doing dungeons and you don't have a healer, this can be actually really, really useful because that 1,080 health that you lose over 3 seconds is completely unnoticeable. You don't even realize it's going, but you do get a 10k heal almost. Um, this is going to be uh, obviously a buffed heal. And if you go to things ticking, huge. So you could be healing your damage dealers in a 3DD one tank uh, group. You could be healing yourself if there's no damage dealers in front of you. Because it only works to people in front of you. So if you don't have people in front of you, you're going to heal yourself instead. So it can be a nice little burst heal. And after casting, you gain minor mending for 8 seconds, increasing your healing done by 8%. Um, it's a reasonably expensive skill at 3,500 Magicka. But if you do need a burst heal or a group heal... This is obviously really good. Like, giving your group a 9k plus heal can save lives. Can save lives in dungeon situations. So, really good option. Uh, triple, not really a skill that you want to use. Um, even looking through both of these, there's not really anything worth it. Like, there's an immobilize with crippling grasp, but at the end of the day, it's only on one enemy. And you can only have one of these active at a time. So, it's not really very useful. Leeching strikes, big skill. Imbue a weapon with soul stealing power, causing your light and heavy attacks to heal you for 1,611 health and restore 106 stamina for 20 seconds. Fully charged heavy, attack, heavy attacks restore twice the value. Um, so this is why, again, the Nightblade requires some additional um, advanced level playstyle because you need to be light and heavy attacking to benefit from this working. You do restore 4 to 70 additional stamina when the effect ends. So you can benefit from that if you are blocking more often. But you do want to be light and heavy attacking, benefiting from this on a bigger scale. Uh, the next skill, uh, again, you've got two options. You've got Power Extraction, which is a debuff. Um, it's a stamina costing debuff, though. 2,800 stamina. But it is an AoE minor cowardice uh, debuff. So siphon the vigor from your enemy's blood, dealing 4414 disease damage to all nearby enemies. If an enemy is hit, you apply Minor Cowardice to them for 7 seconds, reducing their weapon and spell damage by 215, and you gain Major Brutality. Now, Minor Cowardice isn't a great debuff, if we're being honest. It's one of the one of the more lackluster debuffs, but if you want to really heavily debuff like an ad pull, then you could go into an ad pull, and this will have a nice impact in that situation. In terms of a boss fight, I don't think you'd really worry too much about it because you've got so much damage reduction on a boss usually anyway. Things like Minor Maim don't stack well with Minor Cowardice. Cowardice and Maim don't work well together. They work much better on their own. Obviously, if you've already got Minor uh, and Major Maim and then you add in Minor Cowardice, it's almost not going to have an effect. Like the 215 weapon and spell damage reduction um, is much less than that. Like, well, sorry, the percentage of damage that you reduce after the Maim is quite low so it's not particularly worth it when combined with other debuffs that reduce damage the other morph this is this is quite good even on a tank so sap essence uh, when you're in an ad pull it's it's gonna deal 4163 magic damage to all nearby enemies and heal you and allies for 1504 1506 plus 20 percent more for each enemy hit so when you've got an ad pull with eight enemies and you walk in it's quite a big heal and it's healing you and your group 
And then you're going to get more healing because it's also going to proc major sorcery and brutality, which is then going to increase your healing even more. So it can be a good skill. Again, if you're struggling in trash pulls, maybe you've only like, the, I know some trial groups use one healer. So if you had sap essence on somebody providing an additional heal, that would make it even more comfortable. Um, but it does make ad pulls a bit more comfortable having somebody use this skill anyway, even if there are two healers, because it's quite a big amount of healing and it's based on the enemies that are hit. And then finally, we're on to the passives. We've got Catalyst. After drinking a potion, you gain 20 ultimate. Very important, very valuable for the Nightblade tank. This means that Nightblade tanks generally benefit heavily from drinking potions on cooldown and using three infused potion cooldown. That has a huge benefit. Magicka Flood, increased Magicka. Uh, while a siphoning ability slide, increased Magicka by 8%. Magicka is useful on a tank because obviously tanks use mostly Magicka skills. It's, it's really nice to have more Magicka. Soul Siphoning. Increase your healing done by 3% for each Siphoning ability slide. Again, you might have a couple of skills slide. You might have Leech and Strikes and Swallowed Soul on your front bar, and then that means that your healing from Dark Cloak and stuff is going to be increased by 6%. So it's a really nice passive. You want to have that active on your front bar, ideally, or the heal bar. Whichever bar your main healing's on and you spend the most time on, you want this a skill from this skill line to be there to benefit from that. Um... And then finally, transfer. Casting a siphoning ability while in combat generates to ultimate once every four seconds. So, as I mentioned before, that's why Swallowed Soul is a good skill. Because That is everything that you need to know about the Nightblade tank, guys. That is the positives, the negatives, the buffs, the debuffs, the strengths, the weaknesses, the skills, the passives. Um, hopefully, this will give you a kind of idea of whether you want to play a Nightblade tank. And if you do already have a Nightblade tank, what skills and passives you might want to use or what you might want to take that are going to benefit you as a tank. So yeah, thank you.